Does my equipment change depending on the sport? I don't think that's for me to tell you. Your goal as a videographer, as a content creator is to do Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I am a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And today we have a very special guest on the channel. He is currently on the social team for the Toronto Maple Leafs who are in the thick of the NHL playoffs. He is my former coworker with Ryerson Rams where we shot a whole bunch of different types of sports content. And he is currently building his own YouTube audience where he is teaching the fundamentals of creating sports videos and gaining a career in sports content creation. Please welcome to the channel, my coworker and good friend, Juan Morales. Hey Peter, thanks so much for having me on the channel. I know this was a long time coming, partially my fault for being a little busy, but I'm glad we're able to finally collaborate and get on something together. Just a little introduction for those on Peter's channel who don't know me, my name is Juan Morales. I am a 23 year old content creator from Toronto, Ontario, just like Peter. And I specialize in videography and graphic design content. I've been creating sports content for the last three and a half, almost four years now actually. Uh, starting off at Ryerson, I was a video producer for their athletic department and I was also very very lucky to have an opportunity to work with MLSC as a video editor. And most recently I've taken on a role on the Toronto Maple Leaf social team as a social video content editor. So I got into creating sports content. Like I said, during my time at Ryerson, I was able to apply and work with their athletic department as a video producer for three out of my five years in university. And honestly, those three years changed my life and changed the direction about everything I've wanted to do since. In this job, I was able to just shoot and create video content for all eight of Ryerson's varsity teams. And that just gave me the ability to experiment and try shooting different sports and just fall in love with the concept of content creation and telling stories in sports. Whether it was a hype video for the big video board, or if it was a storytelling feature, telling a story of an athlete or like a mixtape to highlight certain athletes or games, I was kind of given you know, the free reign to do whatever I wanted as long as the department liked it or if the department needed it. And I think that just allowed me to grow significantly as a content creator and really fall into the rabbit hole of sports, you know, videography and, and editing and all of those things. So to kind of re-echo what Juan said here, shooting at Ryerson is something that got Juan and I a ton of experience shooting a lot of different sports. It also put us in a lot of scenarios that really pushed us as creatives and kind of forced us out of the skill sets that we had built and made us learn new things, which ultimately was a good thing. And on top of that, it's a place where you can build a lot of connections with like-minded peers, shooting in university that is. Juan and I met shooting at our university, Ryerson, and it's a connection that we hold to this day as we both continue on in our professional journeys. So if you have the opportunity to shoot for your high school team, shoot for your university team, or like anything of that matter, I really highly recommend that you take it. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna meet people who you can carry with you throughout the industry and kind of work with. And like, I just think it's an invaluable experience that you have that at your disposal. I've been able to shoot basketball, hockey, soccer, volleyball, gymnastics, figure skating. I have a pretty varied list of sports that I've shot and I think it's for the better. It's just made me a more versatile creative in my opinion. My favorite sports to shoot are definitely, you know, it's a tie between hockey and basketball. Before it was generally hockey, but once I got into basketball more and I learned about the sport more and especially getting to know the athletes on those teams at Ryerson at the time, like I fell in love with it. I haven't been able to shoot much of anything and I've, it's only really been basketball recently, which again, I love, but I, I can't wait to get back and start shooting other things again. I, I miss hockey, I miss volleyball, I miss shooting soccer, but I wouldn't say the skill set changes a lot between sports. I think, you know, videography and sports videography as a whole, uh, it's pretty streamlined across the board. I think, you know, not the skill set changes, but I think your knowledge of the sport has to change and you have to understand how different sports work. For example, the first time I shot volleyball, I've never watched the game. I didn't really know, you know, I know what happens in a volleyball game, but I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the positions. I didn't know very simple rules. And when I went back to edit that footage, it really showed because I obviously didn't have a knowledge of it. So I didn't know you know, where to point my camera, who to focus on, all about all those things. I was just kind of clueless at the time. But I think generally within shooting different sports, it, your goal as a videographer, as a content creator is to do, you know, to do your job no matter what it is, you know, capture scoring plays, capture moments, uh, shoot celebrations, anything you normally do, say shooting basketball, for example, because I know Peter's audience heavily is in the basketball scene. Taking that same principle to other sports, it's not that difficult. I think it's just understanding other sports and learning them that will, make the big difference in your content. I think positioning and arena layouts and the environment is the other thing to consider when changing sports uh, because it very, very much can vary. For example, a core sport like volleyball or basketball, you are you can be right on the baseline. You can be right there in the action, right next to the athletes as they do their thing. 
that isn't always the case with something like soccer or hockey because the field of the rink layout, there's an environmental factor there. You just have to experiment and see what works and what doesn't. But I think understanding the sports and the rules and everything that happens in them and as well as the layout and the environment you're in definitely can make a huge impact on how your content comes out. Does my equipment change depending on the sport? It depends, to be totally honest. A 24 to 70 lens is universal. You know, it's such a versatile piece of glass. I have a Tamron 20 to 75 and I use it a ton for volleyball and I use it a ton for basketball just because it's a perfect all around focal length. For soccer or hockey or even football, you can you can definitely use one, but since your proximity to the players change, the field of play is a lot bigger than a court, right? I remember shooting soccer on my 18 to 105 when I was on a crop frame. And 105 is great, but when I ended up buying a 70 to 200, it just changed my world because I was able to get so much closer to the action while standing at the sidelines. So I think it really does depend on the sport you're shooting, but also what you're trying to shoot in general, like, you know, what your final piece of content is, uh, a lot of factors, but I think generally it really is so situational. If you're shooting football, field hockey, rugby, soccer, and you're outside in the bright sunlight, get an ND filter. If you don't have one, you're not gonna have a good time. Should you shoot one sport or various sports? I don't think that's for me to tell you, but in my opinion, it just depends on what your end goal is and where you wanna end up. A good example is actually, you know, you, Peter, you know, you're you're a basketball guy through and through. I know you've shot other sports and, you, and you'll take the opportunity to do so, but you've built your brand and your style on basketball. And if you're subscribed to Peter, you obviously know, like seeing his basketball related tutorials and videos. And if you follow him on Instagram and his work with CEBL, like you've geared yourself to work in basketball. And that's perfectly okay. It's like when you start being a content creator, people are always like, you have to find your niche. Me and Peter, like we're videographers and our niche within that is sports videography. But you know, you can make the argument, should you niche within that niche? So shoot and create for the sport that you wanna work in, create content for where you wanna be hired from or where you wanna find yourself one day. If you have the opportunity to shoot a lot of sports, I would try it because there are so many different things between sports that make them so unique and I think Personally, it's made me a better content creator. It's made me a better storyteller. And I've been able to get different opportunities with different teams and organizations versus where I might not have if I've only shot one sport. At the end of the day, ultimately as a sports creative, focus on what makes you happy, focus on what you wanna work in in the future and just enjoy the process. I don't think it really makes a huge difference if you're shooting one sport versus multiple or vice versa. Like you shouldn't worry about Am I shooting too many sports or am I too varied? Like, you know, do what makes you happy and do what you can create the best content out of because at the end of the day, we're in this because we enjoy it and we have fun with it. So find what makes you happy, find what you enjoy creating and shooting and roll with it. And I think at the end of the day, it'll make you a much better creative for it. Just to conclude my part here, thanks Pete for having me on. I appreciate, you know, you bringing me on to the channel. A long time coming. I'm glad we were finally able to collaborate. I had a great time chatting with you about this topic. And guys, if you haven't followed Peter, if you haven't subscribed him, there's a big red button down there. Uh, I'm pretty sure his Instagram is in the description too, so follow Peter. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram, uh, 77 J Morales is my Instagram. It's also my Twitter, it's also my TikTok. My YouTube channel, also Juan Morales Creative, if you look it up, I hopefully, you know, Peter can put it down in the description below. But I would appreciate if you guys could follow, subscribe, trying to do very similar work to Peter and just help people grow in the sports creative space. I'm always down to chat, send me a DM. But yeah, thanks again, Peter, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Thank you so much, Juan, for coming on the channel. You dropped a ton of super valuable information throughout this video. I think that people are gonna love this. If you did like this video, Juan's socials are all in the links in the description. He said them all already, so they're all down there. And if you like my channel, and if you got this far in this video, I'm assuming that you do like my channel, then you're gonna like Juan's channel because he basically does the exact same thing as me. So you're getting like an extra upload every week. So go subscribe to Juan. And yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. So until next time, peace.